Ike was murdered, and I knew there was It's been 10 years now, but Evelyn Meeks remembers it like it was yesterday. Every time you walk out here, you know, you see, you remember things, and remember walking in that morning after he was murdered and seeing all the yellow tape and, and the cars and, and the, the people trying to get into work. And Meeks says the morning of January 18, 1989, will forever remain in her mind. On this gray day in winter, her boss, Michael Frankie, the head of state prisons, was found stabbed to death outside his Salem office. You just wonder, uh, why? For the first time ever, Meeks, the closest staffer to Michael Frankie, is telling her story publicly. She says doubts about Frankie's death, the official version anyway, has nagged at her for 10 years. He was, you know, seemed to be awfully nervous about a lot of things because he would run in and out, you know, he was always in, a, always in a hurry to do something or to get somewhere. And he just seemed, seemed like almost like he was looking over his shoulder for something. Meeks says Frankie was keeping careful notes on his laptop computer, a computer that after the murder she never saw again. The idea that Frankie was fearful in the days leading up to his death stands in stark contrast to the official version of the facts. Prosecutors alleged and a jury agreed that Frank Gable acted alone, that the drug-addicted ex-con was rummaging through Frankie's car for money. The jury believed that when Frankie confronted him, Gable stabbed him in the heart. Still, no physical evidence tied him to the scene. But I now, Meeks tells a story that's never been told before, at least not publicly. Meeks says nine months prior to the killing, Frankie traveled to Lake Tahoe for a skiing vacation. He traveled with prison department colleagues, among them the attorney for the prison system, Scott McAllister. He was supposed to stay a week, but just a day after he arrived, he wanted to come home. He would never reveal what was so upsetting to him. He and Scott McAllister had been such friends early on. And then all of a sudden, they were no longer friends. Meek says after the ski trip, Frankie and McAllister never saw eye to eye. In January 1990, a year after the killing, lawmakers looking into prison corruption and the Frankie murder called McAllister to testify. He said he knew of no official wrongdoing. And did you ever see a pattern that you would have described as some kind of uh, organized corruption. No. But just weeks later, FBI agents raided McAllister's Utah home. They found child pornography. He was later convicted of misdemeanor charges of distribution. We attempted to talk with McAllister this week at his Arizona office. He never returned our calls. Michael Frankie's brother Kevin is still investigating his brother's death now 10 years after the killing. He says there were a few things that would upset his brother. One was child pornography. But he admits the prison director may also have been investigating drugs and other forms of corruption behind the walls of the prison system. That's what still gnaws at him. He died a, a horrible, violent death, and it, uh, a death for me is still up in the air. And there's an innocent man that's uh, being punished for it. The man who's being punished, Frank Gable, will soon go to court again on a post-conviction appeal. He will allege that one of his attorneys was incompetent. Each year, Evelyn Meeks walks the grounds where her boss was murdered, and she wonders what really happened. Every time you come around here, it brings back unfortunate memories. And the truth, she says, may never be known. It's, it's hard. It's yeah. hard. In Salem, Eric Mason, Coin 6 News.